everyone, and I am back with another top 10 video. I feel like I've been talking for hours. I probably have. My mouth is very dry. Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 and I am back again with another top 10 list. Another three top 10 lists in three different videos of movies that I reviewed from last year. And like I did with the re-upload series, I couldn't do with the revamp, I have the good, the bad, and the meh. And of course, like I started with the re-upload series, I'm going to start with the meh. The films that were like, good, but bad. Before we get into the top 10 though, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Join the madness. Follow us on Discord in the link down below. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the works. Contact us. Let us know what your thoughts are. Share us some ideas that you want us to do. We are a variety channel. We're up for it. Number 10 goes to Friday the 13th Part 7. Friday the 13th Part 7 has the looks of a great horror movie. When it's delivered, it's not a good horror movie. Mainly because of the direction of the producer at the time and the MPAA chopping this film down to hell. But Part 7 has the best looking deteriorated zombie Jason out of all of them. I don't know what the hell they did in Part 8, but that's another story for another time. But Part 7 is a film of what could have been if done right. And that's kind of why it makes it kind of a math film because it just felt like it wasn't delivered properly. I like it, but it needs some work. Number nine goes to Alien vs. Predator, the first one. Long story short, I can watch this film. I don't get much entertainment value out of it. I don't really hate it. It's just boring as fuck. Number eight goes to Last Ship. This is a film that I saw quite a bit on Netflix, but I kind of skinned past it until I finally decided to watch it around the time when I was stuck at home with COVID last year. And it did good but it just kind of felt like it was missing something in it like there was an L like I couldn't I still can't really pinpoint what in the film is missing from it that it needed to give it that extra push into the top 10 good films but it had enough to keep it out of the bad that's why it's in the meh it's just it's missing something please tell me what it is that I feel like it's missing I would like to know Number seven goes to The Terrifier. Mainly because I've seen this film too many times. It's a very gross and creepy ass horror film, but it's not my kind of horror film. It's a grindhouse horror film. It's gory as fuck. It's too much like Saw. I, I've seen it four or five times. I'm tired of watching it. It's not bad. It does what it needs to do. I just need a break from it, so, yeah. Number six goes to The Collector. I feel like The Collector has the same problems The Collection has. It has a very interesting story with, like, the, the burglar trying to get this, the thing in the house while he's also trying to survive from the killer and then also try to save the kid. But it still kind of feels bleh, and it also kind of feels like it was shot in the 90s, but that could have been just a filter choice that the producers are going for, or the editors were going for. But it's still... It's kind, it's, 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 it's kind of boring. Basically, the idea of it is great. But the delivery of it could have been better. Number five goes to Star Wars Episode Eight. It does a ballsy move because of director change. It kind of goes away from the original story. I don't know. Like, I liked it when I saw it in theaters, and then I watched it again, and then I hated it, and then I watched it again, and I'm just like, there's nothing special about it. There's nothing special about the sequel trilogy of the Star Wars franchise. It's just, it, it doesn't really... See what happens when I talk about the Star Wars tri uh, sequel trilogy? I get frustrated. Because it could have been so much better than what it was. Number four goes to Resident Evil Afterlife. This was the beginning of the end when it came to anything good of the Resident Evil films, if there was anything good left in it to begin with. This film was boring. 
It wasn't god awful, bouncing off the fucking walls, stupid like the last two films, but it's just boring. If I walked into a room and somebody's watching it and I have nothing else better to do, I might sit down and watch it. Am I going to enjoy myself? Not entirely. Number three goes to The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. This film was kind of a letdown, I to me. Like, Krieger liked it a lot, and, he, and it was just a lot better, but I... Coming off of The Conjuring 2 and The Conjuring 1, like, it had a lot to live up for, and it just... It didn't deliver the same as the first two did, and some of the standalone films that were made. Some. It's not horrible like the two Annabelle films, Annabelle and Annabelle Comes Home, and it's not horrible like The Nun. Thinking about it makes me kind of get frustrated because, again, it's one of those, it, what could have been, it could have been more. They pretty much have milked the conjuring cow at this point to where it's dry. That might be why I'm just like, it just kind of sucked. But I still watched it, and I still kind of liked it. Number two goes to Star Wars Episode Nine. This one's further down the list than Episode Eight is because, sadly enough, there was a script leak for Episode Nine, and I actually didn't go see this film in theaters when it first came out. We reviewed it in the sequel trilogy uh, last year, and that was the first time I saw it. And pretty much when I watched the film, it was beat for beat, lick for lick, step by step, the same thing as the leak script. And the leak script was absolute garbage, which made this film even more garbage. And this film, you could tell, was definitely done with reshoots. Out the ass, through hell and back, all, le all nine, eight, thirteen levels of hell, whatever fucking Dante's Inferno is. See? Again. When I talk about the Star Wars sequel trilogy, I get frustrated. This is one of them where I'm just like, this one fucking sucks. But I don't 100% hate it because it has some good points. So, and that's just nostalgia. I wanted something new with the Star Wars series and I got nothing but nostalgia and callbacks. And it's all I got. I enjoy nostalgia. I enjoy callbacks. But not every single thing they do has to be a nostalgia point or a callback point. Or it doesn't have to be fucking stupid or boring. And number one goes to Friday the 13th Part 5. This film was borderline horrible for me because it was a film that they tried to do a new concept without actual Jason Voorhees and tried to Scooby-Doo this shit with this movie. But thinking about it again, like, this film could have been a lot better if it was written a little bit better, if not had a whole new writing team but they were to write with the same idea in mind. It could have been great if they didn't do dumb stuff. Basically, all these films on this list is it's either boring, it, what could have been, and it sucked. But not enough to make me go, I fucking hate my life. So that is my top ten list of last year's films through the meh. Next time you shall see me, I'll be talking about the bad, and then the good. This is Mike Chet 95 signing out.